So in this segment, we're going to be discussing the uh, a guy from the uh, IEA talking about what I, you know, kind of criticizing the government on uh, Brexit and other stuff when it comes to deregulation. I think this guy's worth covering because this is the dude, at least this is the company that Liz Truss was listening to when she did a lot of the stupid things that she did as prime minister. And, you know, let's be honest, she didn't do a lot of smart things. And this was, you know, one of the groups that pushed the Kamikaze budget, which, you know, really damaged the country and led to essentially the demise of Liz Truss as a prime minister and um, Kwasi Kwarteng as um, the chancellor. So th this is the group here that are in the year of government, really. And that's what scares me because they're a bunch of lunatics, in my opinion. So let's have a listen to what he's got to say at, you know, the Conservative Democratic organization which um yeah i'm sure i'm sure they're a bunch of sane and normal people i thought the point of brexit was to take back control we have taken back control you know all of the laws are now made in westminster we had a large say or at least we played a fundamental part in the formation of rules whilst we were members of the eu um but obviously we're not members of the eu anymore so we don't decide eu laws but um, we have full control over the laws we have in the UK. We decided to implement all of the, we tried, you know, we decided to uh, copy over all of the EU rules because we wanted to uh, make sure the transition was as smooth as possible when we left. That was a decision we made as a country that the government made. So, you know, nonsense. For decades, Eurosceptics pointed to pointless, costly and absurd red tape emanating from Brussels. They, they didn't. They talked about the fact that they wanted vacuum cleaners that had more watts and hair dryers that had more watts and other things that they wanted more powerful, even though it didn't really make them better products. Uh, I don't know what kind of carpets this lot are vacuuming or their, their staff are vacuuming, but you don't need like a really like hacks, you know, um, what's it called? Vacuum cleaner or hair dryer. You, you didn't you didn't need it. Power efficiency is really important, especially, um, you know, <laughs> especially now we're in an energy crisis. But, you know, the red tape they argued about you know it was just stupid there were there were countless countless episodes of the james o'brien show where these people would call in with the most lunatic statements and you're just like you're not living you're not living in reality you know bendy bananas and all that and i'm somewhat concerned and disappointed that the government is now only committed to removing a very very small part of that that doesn't seem to me to be taking back control uh, i personally voted for brexit myself shock Guy makes stupid decision. But I didn't realise that it was to regain the sovereign right to mismanage our own affairs. I thought it was actually going to be a point of liberation. See, that, that's why this lot is stupid, right? Because the only, the only one thing I'll agree with Brexit is, it, is it right? or one of the few things I'll agree on, is that Brexit has really showed that our government, are, are the, you know, the people that we elect are a bunch of clowns. Because you've given them all of this power, right? And they've done none of the things you wanted. For same, some of them for the same reasons, like not pushing through all the deregulation and the EU retention bill, right? But you guys decided, do you know what? We're going to give all of this control, all of this power to the politicians of Westminster, only to realise this lot are the bunch of, you know, the biggest clowns outside of any circus. And, you know, when they talk about how the economy was mismanaged, like the IEA, in my opinion, played a key role in that trust budget. And that's the one of the things that bankrupted, not bankrupted, that would be the wrong word, but really damaged the country economically, pushed the prices of bonds to go up dramatically, almost bankrupted pension funds. That was the consequences of that Liz Truss uh, tenure as prime minister. So, you know, you guys took back all this control. We, you know, the, that budget could have passed whilst we're EU members anyways. Um, that you would have been like, bro, what are you doing? You know, you want to be careful here because uh, you, you, you're looking a bit stupid. Um, but the, the fact remains, like, you took back all this power and gave it to a bunch of clowns. What did you, th you know, how do you think this would go? Because I think that the political party that is honest with the electorate about these challenges will be the political party that is entrusted with the challenge of solving them. The, the problem is politicians aren't going to be honest with us because we're in a financial crisis right now. When you look at the inflation figures, when you look at um, you know investment in the UK, when you look at what businesses are saying, you know, big businesses are saying about investing in the UK, they don't want to do it because they don't see the financial future of the UK. We're getting called out by everyone. Brexiteers, you know, some guy saying, I back Brexit, but now I'm going to set up in Italy. Uh, Dyson saying, you know, the idea that we'll become a science superpower um, is nonsense. Brexiteers are clowning us. you got the guy, um, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who's setting up uh, a, another car manufacturing plant, I think, in Austria. You know, it's named after a British pub, the um, 
but he's building it in Austria. Like, Brexiteers are clowning the Brexit that they uh, backed in the first place. That's the situation we're in now, people. And so for him to, to make any of these statements, oh, I thought oh, we were taking back control and all this other stuff, and I, d I didn't think it would lead to all the problems we have now. It's like, you gave the power to a bunch of clowns. You didn't understand how... Um, how the economy works. You didn't understand how global trade works. You didn't understand a lot about a lot of things. Let's let's be honest now. And you know, I don't think I, I, I'll speak for myself. Here. I didn't know a lot of things. You know, I was a lot younger back when the referendum happened. Um, but also the fact that if Brexit didn't happen, I would not know a lot of the things I do now. But <laughs> I never voted Brexit because I was like, "Yo, this seems like a bad idea." Because um, especially because I didn't trust a lot in Westminster. You know, I knew they're a bunch of clowns. And so why would I want to vote to give them more power? And then you realise that you know, they've got all this power and they decide to continue to be clowns, even bigger ones than uh, David Cameron. And so, you know, for Brexiteers to complain about this stuff, oh, I didn't think Brexit would go like this and I didn't think they would misuse all of this power. Like, you know, when the last time we had a smart prime minister was probably Tony Blair. That was a long time ago. Even at 2016, that was a while ago. Um, it's just frustrating to know and see Brexiteers cry about stuff they voted on um, because this is, this is the reality you create, especially this group here especially them they're the ones that helped cause um some of the messes that we've been through over the last few years um so i don't want to hear them playing victim or saying oh yeah i can't believe this has happened like this is on you guys thanks a lot anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe remember whenever you see anyone from this organization just turn off the channel and i'll catch you in the next one